Hi, in this video I'm going to be working on this C-Class, I think it's a W203. And I'm going to demonstrate how to change the front discs as well as the pads. This is what the front pads looks like. Uh, they're much bigger. If you compare them to the back pads, you'll see that the front are much bigger. There's the front, these are the OEM pads, and then there are the back ones. <clears throat> There's the sensor, the wear sensor, which is uh, you should change as well. The things you'll need to do the front pads and uh, discs uh, job, you'll need some Loctite. Uh, various tools basically a socket set is fine uh, does help if you've got another very uh, shifting spanner or maybe a second socket set just some screwdrivers a hammer and then along the way you might see one or two other tools all right in a separate video I will be doing the rear uh, pads and then I'll also be doing the bleeding of the brakes in another video uh, gonna keep that separate okay first things first make sure the handbrake is on and that it's in gear and you see I chopped the back wheels with some bricks and I'm gonna be working on the front so you've got to loosen these wheel nuts and I've already done that they are loosened so now I can jack up the car and take the wheel off Right, just showing you that I have four trestles, that is overkill, but I just want to show you that never get under a car unless there are trestles. The positions for where you can mount the trestles are as follows. You, you can put a trestle over here, because there's the body and it joins here. Remember, this is a steel plate, but one shouldn't put a trestle just anywhere on the steel plate. Here is a good space if you want to. Try not to put it on the control arms because you end up depressing the rubber. Although, if you do put it on the uh, casing here, the bodywork, it would be okay. Okay, since I'm working on the front brake, so I have the front of the car jacked up. What some people do is they leave the jack there. So you can see I've got the jack there with the trestles. The car is a little bit higher on the one side just because the jack's there. Um, it is sitting on the trestles and now I'm ready to change the front brake discs and pads. Right, you can see my hands are already getting black. And this whole area here is very dirty. It's got a lot of uh, brake dust from the brake fluid and as well as from the pads. So my advice is take a hose pipe and just spray it. And you can see, look at the ground there, how black it is. And just clean this area before you start working on it. Right, when you're working on brakes, it's a good idea to release the pressure from the brake reservoir. So I've just released these two nuts here. And now I'm just uh, taking this out. And there's the brake reservoir. So I'm just going to open it. And you'll see why I've opened it in a second. And just by the way, just having a look at that, you can see that oil is actually uh, pretty dirty. It needs to be changed. Right, just so you're not in suspense, the reason why I opened the oil, the oil filler is because I'm going to be depressing the piston. And it's going to actually push oil back into that uh, reservoir. And that's why I opened it. Just remember to close it when you've done the service. You'll see as we go in the video what I'm talking about. Now, the usual way to do brakes is to just release these caliper bolts. But because we are changing the disc, and as you can see, this disc has got a major lip here, and that's why we're changing it, because it's reached the minimum thickness. Now, you could just remove the entire caliper itself, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove the entire caliper. But if you were just changing the brake pads and not the disc, well, then it's much easier. You'll just open these... Um, caliper bolts and then you leave the disc in place so this is the repair when you're changing both pads and the disc okay so what you want to do is you want to get this um, caliper open now there's a piston here and that piston has to be pushed back in so the best way to do it is to take a screwdriver 
and try get it between the caliper and the pad, not on the disc. You don't want to um, gouge the disc. Look, I am changing this disc, so it doesn't really matter. But um, if you were just changing the pads, you don't want to gouge the disc. All right, and then you're going to wedge it and pull towards you. And slowly you'll see that the actually falls back in. Now, when you do this, make sure the reservoir does not overflow. You might want to just put a little cloth around the brake reservoir. Remember, I opened the brake reservoir. The reason is to allow this uh, oil back pressure to go into the system. All right, now, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull. Right, it's already created a bit of space. Now, I can get a thicker screwdriver. I don't want the screwdriver to snap. And you, you gently pull on it. Now, why I say gently is whacking it like that is going to do nothing. You've got to slowly, with a constant pressure, pull towards you. And slowly you'll feel that piston is moving in. You might think it's gone in all the way, but actually it can go a bit more. It's got to go all the way in. Right, now it's got to the maximum. As you can see, it's hitting here on the side. If I just show you, there, it's hitting there on the side. So pulling it anymore is not going to help. Now what I'm going to do, now that I've got space, is I'm going to wedge it on this side now. And now what I'm doing is I'm wedging between the other brake pad and that uh, disc so now i'm making sure that that piston goes in all the way and there it is you can see i don't know if you saw it going all the way right to, so to sum up you want to get some space you can start this side but keeping in mind that you will get to a point where it's going to hit here and then you're going to cut, uh, wedge your screwdriver between this side the pad and the disc and you're going to push the piston just that little bit more now there are two bolts at the back here there's one and this bolt is fastening the entire caliper body onto the hub. So this is the different way of doing the brakes. Because I have to take this off in order to get the disc out, I'm going to change the pads at the same time. So I need to get that, that bolt, and there's one at the bottom, and these are very tight. These are about 120 odd Newton meters. So what I'm going to have to do is you might need to use a breaker bar. A breaker bar looks like this. It's a much longer bar because... You know, when you're working on the brake, sometimes you'll pull on the wrench in your hand, your hand, your knuckle will go into some uh, sharp parts. So you've got to be very careful here. So there goes the number 18. And remember, you're in the opposite direction now. So I'm just going to pull this up with a breaker bar. There we go. Sorry. And there we go. It's loosened it. And I'll do the one underneath. Uh, you know you're doing the right ones when you see a much bigger head. These are much smaller. You can see this is just for the caliper to move uh, in and out. Whereas to fasten this entire caliper body onto the, the hub, well, there's a much bigger nut. And that's the bolt. And that's why we are uh, using this breaker bar. And now I'm just going to loosen the bottom one. There we go. Okay. Okay, now what's going to happen is when I loosen this whole thing, it's going to want to fall. And there's a pipe here, a very strong pipe, but you don't want to put pressure on it. And also you don't want it to like twist upside down or, or the wrong way around. So what I've got is a cable tie. Now you don't have to do this. If you haven't got cable ties, just put a little bucket here and let the caliper rest on the bucket. And I'm just tying it to the spring, the coil. And what I'm going to do is as soon as I've released the um, caliper, I'm just going to tie this cable tie so that the, the caliper uh, assembly is, is, is being held up in the air and suspended and not fall onto the ground and put pressure, especially on the pipe. All right, so there's the bolt, if you want to see what it looks like. And you can see the blue, because that's got Loctite. A lot of vibration here, and that is why you need lots of Loctite here. Right, now I'm, there's one more bolt holding it in. Now, can you see I'm holding the caliper underneath, the assembly, because I don't want it to fall. So there comes the bolt, and here's the caliper assembly, and now you can see two things. The firstly, there's a wire here, and this is for the uh, brake sensor, which you also don't want it to uh, be pulled tight. And then if you look as well, you will see that that's that pipe I'm talking about, and I don't want it to be put under pressure. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to just tie this uh, body to the cable tie. And you can see I'm actually balancing on my foot now. And that's why I said, if you haven't got cable tie or something like that, just use a bucket and rest it on a bucket. You can see there it's resting. 
Now, if you wanted to, you could release this wire, the tension a little bit here. There are little uh, clips here. And if you were worried that it'd be pulling too tight, you can just uh, open here and you find that these clips can just be released quite easily. You just uh, don't force it, but you just peel the side. See, there's the clip and you just peel it. There we go. See, now I've released the tension on that uh, uh, brake sensing wire. You could have done this before. Uh, you don't have to do it if you know what you're doing. Okay, so this one is obviously the ABS and this one is the uh, brake wear sensor. Right, so there's the disc. So now let's get the disc off and then we'll start with the brake. Now to get this off, there is an annoying little screw here and this happens to be a T27. Now that's what it talks uh, but looks like and it goes in there now as I said you, if you haven't got that you can use regular tools you can if you've got a hex set or an allen key set whatever you want to call it um, then you could just use that but just keep in mind you don't want to strip that thing so if you haven't got those torques then just do it very slowly it's very easy to strip this bolt and people always over tighten this thing uh, it shouldn't be uh, more than about 30 newton meters so if you use a little allen key it should also work but as i said just go about it slowly now if you want to you can even put some penetrating lubrication there uh, just to help it along i've already put and there it comes and you can see this person has put locked out on you it's fine if you put the locked out but then don't over tighten remember this thing is being held on by all the wheel bolts anyway Right, if you find it's not coming off, okay, then you can just take a mallet, which is a rubber hammer, or if you haven't got such a thing, just take a regular hammer and just wrap it in some cloth like this. And if you haven't got that, just take a brick and wrap it in a cloth or a stone. You just tap it and you see how it comes out so easily. Right. You might be wondering, how do you know if you must change this disc in the first place? Now, what you'll find is on the disc, it actually tells you the minimum thickness. Somewhere here, you'll see it'll say minimum thickness. Okay, in my case, it's all written here and it's very rusted. Now, you, what you want to do is you want to measure it. So this is where you would need a, a vernier. Now, I can see that here's the new one and I can see that uh, if I measure it, you can see there we go. It's 25, 20, it's 25 mils. Now, you might think that, oh, well, there's still a lot left here, so um, it's still safe. But actually, on, on brake discs, you don't want to let them uh, get very thin because they need to dissipate heat. And you can skim them maybe one time. Skimming means that, if you see here, there's a lip there now see there's a lip so when you put new pads on you, the this it kind of interferes with the pad and I can feel the surface it's not flat all along it's kind of goes like this so what you do is you just skim it taking it to a workshop and they'll just put on a lathe and they'll just make this flat again and it'll look brand new but if you keep skimming it you don't have enough metal yet to dissipate the heat under braking now brake pads happen to be more expensive than brake discs well in my country these are made in south africa so it's quite easy to just get new ones and they're relatively cheap i mean two discs doesn't even cost the price of brand new pads so i'm just changing it but in my case as you can see it's already quite worn um there you can see the lip and i'm not going to skim it you have to pay to skim it and the price of the new disc is it's not worth it uh, and, and not having the car while you're getting it skimmed so i'll just change the discs and there's the part number if you're looking for the W203. Right, and there it is. It says minimum thickness 22.4. So you can see it's 25 and the minimum is 22.4. It's not a lot before they say this thing needs, needs to be replaced. So that's the 20 there it's written. And that's what I was measuring, the thickness here. So they're saying, basically giving you um, two, and a half, two, two and a half mils before you need to get new discs. All right, so now you want to just align that like that and you want to put this guy here. If you want to, you could sand this down and get the surface nice and uh, fresh. I mean, at the minimum, just take some thinners just to clean it. 
And if you really want to stop it from seizing here, uh, you could just use some copper compound. Just put a little bit here and then it makes sure that this does not uh, corrode onto this or at least uh, uh, reduces that. And uh, this, this, I'm not going to do it because it's already a bit oily here, so it's fine. I'm just going to uh, line this and now reinstall. And you can see how easy it fits on. At no point did you see me having to struggle. If I'm struggling, it means I'm making a mistake. All right, I'm going to put a little bit, oh, it's too much. Uh, this has been in the sun, sorry. So don't overdo it with things like Loctite. You only need a drip, uh, especially for something like this. And my advice is do this manually. Don't use a screwdriver to put this nut in, for, uh, uh, bolt in, for the reason that it's quite easy to cross thread it. Right, there we go. It's already found its uh, um, threads, and now I can gently tighten it. You can see there? Gently. All right, and just kind of uh, hand tight. You'll see that it seats in here. Uh, it goes a bit uh, straight. It goes straight. And now I just hand tighten it. Not more than 25 Newton meters. And that's it. It's got the lock tight on. Don't overdo it. Now in the box, you will see you get these new plates. Now these are those. So I'm going to pull out these pads. I'm going to pull out those little plates. And then here's the new pads, one and two, and you'll see the one is directional. And this happens to be the one towards the back because it's got this lip here, and that is where the sensor for the breakaway uh, sits. So there we go. And then they give you some uh, grease here, and I'll show you what you do with that grease in a moment. And then here's the little breakaway sensor, which I'm going to remove from the old pad right now. So I'm going to now start dismantling this old one, the worn one. There we go. I'm just pushing it through and look at that. It just pops right out and there's the pad and you can see it still has some wear and it is starting to perish there. There's a big nice crack forming there. I mean you could have done at least 5,000 Ks on this. And the one at the back, you see what I'm doing is I'm pressing from the back just with my fingers and there it comes. Don't, nothing is forced um, and then there's that breakaway sensor which I just need to release. And I'm releasing it from this side, so I'm just going to pull this. Right, now earlier I was saying about how you've got to get that piston in. Can you see that piston is fully in? It's at the same surface as the uh, caliper. So that's what I'm talking about. And at no point in time must you put a screwdriver near this caliper. It must never come like this. And the reason being is people tend to gouge through this little rubber here and then the brake fluid can easily come out here so that's why I, uh, I didn't I pressed on the brake pad itself and never I did not come and do things like this because that's how you damage this uh, little jacket here and it's uh, look at some point you've got to replace that if you drive the car for another for many many years I mean then you just change those but it doesn't need to be changed now all right so now what I want to do is I'm going to take out these uh, um, brackets and they are quite sharp so just be careful with your hands um, there you go and there it comes out one and this thing can only go in one way so don't worry if you pulled it out and you don't know which way it goes back in it can only go one way and you'll see it on the video now Now, you might have bought generic brake pads and it didn't come with these. It's fine, just clean these and then you reuse them. Now, brakes is really dirty business. So what I recommend is take some thinners, there's some thinners and a toothbrush and just clean the places where you're gonna be working, especially where there's movement. Getting rid of the excess brake disc, uh, brake dust. And you can even bring the host pipe once again. Right, so now I'm going to put these little brackets back in here. You can see how it goes. I'm just inserting like that at an angle and then it seats. Now be, keep in mind that nothing must be forced as you end up bending these things. There's nothing that needs to be forced here. It goes into its place and the silver side faces the pad and the back black side faces the caliper.
Right, so here's the pad. Now you can see there's a directional arrow on it. Now look, you see the way the disc would have to spin if I was driving forward. So that's how I know the arrow is pointing that way. Now that's where I'm going to seat the new brake sensor. I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to do it right at the end. I'm just going to get it in here. Um, again, don't force. And it's fine if it falls out. Uh, <laughs> it might do that one or two times. Now what these brackets do, it actually helps you hold it in place. You see, there's still space at the back there. Um, I don't know if you can see there's a gap there. And uh, the, so that means the pad is being suspended and being held by those brackets. Okay, now this paste uh, stops the rattle. Sometimes when you press on the brakes, you hear like, ding! Well, that's what this paste is for, is to stop that. So you're gonna put a bit here and a bit here. Here we go. And there. Now, don't drop this one on the floor, because then it's gonna be tricky. You see, so that face and that face underneath here, the face there and the face there is going to touch onto that. And then that's going to stop that ding, ding, that sound, especially when the, the pad has been uh, released and then you hit the pad, it, it, it sometimes wants to wobble. And that's where you hear that sound. So this stops that. You don't hear it. Okay, now you might need to just help it in there. You see, I helped it in. And there we go. I'm going to open the mouth as wide as possible. And I'm going to push the back one now as far as I can. And you can see the mouth should be wide enough for the disc. Now if it's not, it means you haven't pressed that piston in enough. So if you find that you still uh, can't get in, well what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to just open that piston. Um, just be careful not to damage the face of these uh, pads now. Okay, I'm not, I don't need to do it, mine is fine, but I'm just showing you. So Now I have a bolt ready, because once I put it here, I can put the bolt through and hold it in place. Don't worry about the lock tight as yet, you can always come back and do that. All right, so now it's time to release this cable tie, or move the bucket, or whatever you're using to hold it in place. And be very uh, mindful that this cable here, this pipe and this one, have not twisted. This thing should never have uh, twisted round, or you're going to have a lot of pressure on that cable. Right, so now, before I release this, I'm getting my hand here to just support it. There we go. And just get this out of the way. Right, now you're ready to put this on. And you can see how, um, I just need to help it along. But you can see how easy it is. It just fits on. There's no problem. And now, here goes that bolt just to hold it in place while I do the rest. Now, the bolt goes at the back there. Get a couple of threads in and then it's fine now you can put the sensor you should be able to see there's a little hole there and that hole is for that and if this thing breaks uh, it's a bit of a problem uh, so all that's happening is this needs to be installed there and this goes around the back so that it can move you see it moves like that so there's a little recess there and i got to get it in that hole while between the two little raised pieces just going back to this one you can see how it slides in there there see that goes like that and then see how that goes in all right just be gentle nothing has to be forced you see it should things should just go in now if you want to you could put some contact cleaner in there just to make sure the contacts are fine and this is a contact cleaner it's called contact 60 contact chemi and i just spray a little bit in there but again you don't have to do these things um they fine just in case this thing was broken and if you looked inside there and you saw it was all corroded well then you would do what i've just done all right now you've got to press that in Right, now you want to put both these bolts in properly. So now you can be quite liberal with this uh, uh, Loctite now. It's the blue one. It means you want, you, you want to be able to open this again. And there I'm putting a fair amount because this is not something you're going to open for at least hmm, 60,000 Ks. Uh, depends how you drive though. But I've got quite a bit here, a few drops. And this has to be made fairly tight. It actually has to be made tight. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this in here.
Now, if you have a torque wrench, that's great. You can set it to about 115, somewhere there, 120 at the most. And you can torque these, meaning you won't over tighten this. But if you don't have this, basically you're making it tight. Uh, not tight where you have to hit the hammer, but it's, it's pretty much your whole body weight on it. And you can see what I mean by my whole body weight. I'm really leaning in here. Okay, see I'm using my leg. There we go. That's 120. Okay, so you just need to put your... Uh, sensor wires back the ones that you released and that's it you've now changed your front brakes and discs don't do any harsh braking for the first hundred kilometers you want this pad and this disc to make friends uh, make sure there's no oil on here you can clean it with some thinners and then brake gently for the first hundred kilometers and thereafter you can do what you want